G'day everyone, and welcome to the practice question lesson on momentum and de Broglie wavelength, where we're tr going to uh, try to go through two to three practice questions involving going between de Broglie wavelength of x-rays and electrons. So the first question, you get this result here. Now, you, might, you may have come across this before, or you may not have. Basically, you have some kind of source for your x-rays or electrons, which then travel through some kind of crystal and you get a diffraction pattern occurring on the screen behind because the crystal sort of acts as a number of slits. And since both x-rays and electrons behave like waves when their wavelength is larger or similar in length to the slit width, you get diffraction patterns not only for, for x-rays which are photons but also for electrons. So this question, it says the x-rays have wavelength 60 picometers and they exhibit the same diffraction, we'll say spacing, as the electrons. If that is the case, they ask what is the momentum of those electrons? So the first thing we do is put this wavelength into meters. The wavelength equals 60 and pico is 10 to the negative 12 meters. And since they have exactly the same uh, diffraction spacing there between the bright bands, because this is constructive interference and this is destructive interference, just like our double slit experiment, which looks a bit like that. This is a circular version of that. Since the width between these are the same and the crystal is implicitly the same, we assume the electrons have the same wavelength as the x-ray. So 60 times 10 to the negative 12. Here's our formula which connects wavelength to momentum. De Broglie wavelength is equal to Planck's constant, I'll put here in joules per second, don't use the electron volts per second one, all over momentum. So getting momentum by itself here is quite easy. Div uh, multiply both sides by P, momentum. Divide both sides by lambda. Momentum equals Planck's constant over lambda. So that the momentum of these electrons here is equal to Planck's constant is equal to 6.63 times 10 neg 34 joules Oh, is it joules second, sorry. I've said joules per second here, but it's joules seconds. So this is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 over 60 times 10 to the negative 12. I'll run this to the calculator, 6.63. I have 1.105, we'll just say 1.11, times 10 to the negative 23, and momentum is in kilograms times meters per second, s to the power of negative 1. So since, to summarize that question, since the wave, since the diffraction spacing was the same, we infer that the wavelength is the same and we can find the momentum from the wavelength using this equation here. The next question is a little more difficult because they don't give you the wavelength straight off the bat. Let's have a look here. So they tell you the x-rays that are inbound to that screen had energy 600 electron volts and the goal of this question is to find the energy of these electrons. Now our basic premises were the same. Since the diffraction spacing is still equal, we know that the wavelength of the x-ray is equal to the wavelength of the electrons. So the first step is finding the wavelength of those electrons. Step one. 
So the wavelength of the electrons is equal to. Now, we can relate energy to wavelength using this equation. E equals h, Planck's constant, times the speed of light, divided by the wavelength. Even though energy is in electron volts here, it is acceptable to still use this formula with electron volts values in there, as long as I use the Planck's constant, which is in electron volts uh, seconds. So that's 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15 electron volt seconds. So let's get wavelength by itself. Lambda equals H C on energy, which is equal to 4.14 times 10 neg 15 times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 600. I have that as 2.07 times 10 to the 9 or 2.07 nanometers. That is the wavelength of these electrons, of these x-rays, excuse me. 10 to the negative 9 meters. That must also be the wavelength of the electrons over here. 2.07 times 10 to the negative 9. But to find the energy of the electrons, we need the velocity and the mass. I'll give you the mass up here. That's, that's a given in these questions. M is equal to 9.1 times 10 neg 31 kilograms. Now, scaling this down a little. Step two is to find the velocity of the electrons. We know that we can apply this formula here to find the momentum. And we also know that momentum is equal to mv. So we can say that lambda is equal to h on p equals h on mv. Let's get v by itself. v is equal to h on m lambda, which is equal to 6.63 times 10 neg 34, going back to joules seconds now. You don't want to use electron volts when finding the velocity. Divided by 9.1 times 10 neg 31 by 2.07 times 10 neg 9. I have that coming to 3.52 times 10 to the 5. Now remember the speed of light is around 3 times 10 to the 8. This is less than the speed of light and that gives me some comfort in my answer. If you get an answer that's greater than the speed of light, then you know you're in a bit of trouble. So now we have the <coughs> velocity of the electrons. The third step is doing the kinetic energy of electrons calculation. And the kinetic energy formula equals one half mv squared ek equals 1 half point 0.5 times 9.1 times 10 neg 31 mass of the electron times 3.52 times 10 to the 5 squared and I have that coming to 5.64 5.64 times 10 to the negative 20 and since I use the Planck's, or since this is the kinetic energy formula, it's in joules. And if I wanted to get that in electron volts, to go from joules to electron volts, you divide by 1.6 times 10 neg 19. And to go from electron volts to joules, you multiply by 1.6 times 10 neg 19. So this in electron volts is... 0.35 electron volts. So not a lot of energy at all. The final question I'm going to go through 
is rather easy. It's simply asking whether something diffracts. Um, I'll scale this down over here. So in this experiment there are electrons being accelerated through a wire mesh towards a screen and the question is do they diffract? The electrons are being accelerated to a velocity of 1 times 10 to the 6 meters and the gaps between uh, the width space is equal to 0.5 millimeters. So do they diffract significantly? Well, since we know the velocity here, we're hopefully going to calculate the wavelength of these electrons. Using this formula up here, the wavelength of the electrons equals Planck's constant over momentum, which is equal to Planck's constant over mv. We'll use the joules seconds, uh, Planck's constant, because we're dealing with kilograms and meters per second. So that's equal to 6.63 times 10 neg 34 over 9.1 times 10 neg 31 times 1 times 10 to the 6, which is equal to 7.29 times 10 neg 10. This is the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons. Now the rule is if the de Broglie wavelength is around about equal to the width or if the de Broglie wavelength is a lot larger than the width or actually just a little bit larger is fine there will be diffraction. In this case the de Broglie wavelength down here is actually a lot less than the width. The width is 0.5 millimeters which is 0.5 times 10 neg 3 and this is 7.29 time, times 10 neg 10. So the de Broglie wavelength is a lot less than the width therefore diffract? No.